Hi everybody, today we're going to talk about complex and imaginary numbers. I think we're all accustomed to taking the square root of numbers like the square root of 4, which is 2, or maybe the square root of 9 is 3. I think we're also used to having a negative sign outside of the square root. So maybe like negative the square root of 4 is negative 2, or if I had negative the square root of 9, I would get negative 3. But today what we want to do is talk about putting the negative underneath the radical. So maybe like looking at square root of negative 4. What we need to do is start with a definition. So by definition, the square root of negative 1 is going to be called i. Because i is the square root of negative 1, when I square it, I get negative 1. So this looks like if I have the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1, I just get negative 1. And we will talk about operations with i as we go, but for now I just want to start with the easy definitions of the square root of negative 1 is i and i squared is negative 1. This letter i is called an imaginary number. So what I want you to think about is anytime there's a negative under the square root, we are going to take that negative out and in its place we are going to put an i outside of the radical. So let's take a look at that. Here's what I want you to think about. I have the square root of negative 5. Well, I could write that as the square root of 5 times the square root of negative 1. Anytime I see the square root of negative 1, that is just going to turn into an i. So the i is outside the radical, not underneath it, and I no longer have a negative. Same thing with the square root of negative 9. I can look at that as the square root of 9 times the square root of negative 1. The square root of a 9 is 3, and the square root of negative 1 is i. So I've changed the square root of negative 9 to 3i. So let's try that some more. Let's simplify negative the square root of 36. Hopefully you're starting to catch on to that negative sign is going to turn into an i. The square root of 36 is 6. So I can think separately about the sign of the number and the number. The square root of negative 7. Well, the square root of 7 I can't reduce, but the i I can take out. The square root of negative 12. Well, let's start that as square root of 12 times i. I can think of 12 as being 4 times 3. I still have the i. Square root of 4 is 2, so I have 2 square root of 3 i. So right now we have dealt with imaginary numbers. We are going to just increase that a little bit and we're going to talk about complex numbers. Complex numbers have the form a plus bi. a is called the real part and b is called the imaginary part. So a and b are both going to be real numbers and the only difference is now I have an i attached to the b. So some quick examples of what does that look like. I might have 4 minus 5i, 6 plus 2i, 3 fourths plus 2 squared of 5i, or just 7i. Each of them has a real part. So for 4 minus 5i, the real part is 4. And then the negative 5i, the negative 5 is the imaginary part. Or I have 6 as the real and 2 as the imaginary part. 3 fourths as the real part and 2 squared of 5 as the imaginary part. With 7i, there isn't a a really, but you could put a zero there. So I would have a real part of zero and an imaginary part of seven. Let's look at classifying numbers as real, imaginary, or complex. Now in reality, all imaginary numbers are complex numbers, but if you're given a choice, so if you have a homework or quiz or something that asks you to just pick one, I wanna show you how to do that. So I'm gonna start with three i. Three i, we are gonna call that imaginary. It's not really wrong to call it complex, but if we're just gonna pick one, I'm gonna pick imaginary. One minus the square root of six. There are no i's, which means this is a real number. Versus eight minus the square root of three i. The i is there, that makes this complex. And just the number seven, that is again a real number. So you wanna look for the i's to be there in order for it to be complex or imaginary. It's gonna have two pieces when it's complex versus one place for imaginary. Let's write each number as a complex number. We're gonna write it in the form a plus bi. So our first number, I have nine minus the square root of negative 36. I'm gonna write that as nine minus, the square root of 36 is six, and I put the i at the end. Then I have five plus the square root of negative 81. So I'm gonna keep the five, I'm gonna keep the plus sign, the square root of 81 is nine, and I write my i. The last one says six plus the square root of negative 12, well, we've done something like this before, so I'm gonna keep my six. I'm gonna say square root of 12i. I'm gonna remember we just said the square root of 12 could be four times three. So I can simplify that as six plus two square root of three i. 
Sometimes students will ask me, does it matter where you put the I? Do I have to put the I at the end? Could I put it first? One of my students said it the best one time is you keep the real part in front and the imaginary part second because you always keep your real friends in front of your fake friends. I like that. So let's try that just a little bit bigger. Here's some irrationals. I have 10 minus the square root of negative 20 over 2. So let's keep the 10, let's keep the minus, but when I'm looking at this negative square root of 20, I'm gonna make that a 20, I'm gonna put the i at the end, and I'm gonna put a two at the bottom. Well, 20 works out to four times five, kind of similar to when we were looking at the square root of 12 over two. Now I have 10 minus, the square root of four is two, I have the square root of five, i over two. Take a good look at this. I have 10, I have two, I have two. What I want you to think of this as is 10 over two minus two square root of five i over two. That two in the denominator belongs to both pieces, 10 and two square root of five. So 10 over two is five, then these twos cancel and I have the square root of five i. I want you to think about whatever's in the denominator. I wanna distribute that to both the real and the imaginary part of my complex number. Similar, I have 12 plus the square root of negative 45 over 21. So let's leave that as 12. I'm gonna say plus the square root of 45i. So I'm first taking care of that negative one under the denominator and pulling it out. Now I have 12 plus. I wanna think of 45 as nine times five. So when I simplify, I have 12 plus square root of nine is three. I have square root of five i. Now let's just put each of those parts over 21. So I can look at how can I reduce that. 12 and 21 are both divisible by three. So if I divide 12 by three, I get four. 21 divided by four is seven. I have plus. Same thing with the three and the 21. They're both divisible by three. So I'm gonna get the square root of five over seven, and I have an i. You're gonna find that you will see this again. Hopefully already you're like, oh, I kind of feel like this looks like the quadratic equation, and spoiler alert, that is what it is for. So. We're studying this to get ready to go over and solve some quadratic equations. Because complex numbers are just numbers, we can add, subtract, multiply, and divide them. When we add and subtract complex numbers, you will combine the real part with the real part, and you'll put the imaginary part with the imaginary part. So let's say I have three plus four i plus eight minus two i. Well, let's put the real parts together. Three plus eight is 11. 4i minus 2i, that's plus 2i. So you can see the 8 and the 3 were real, they combined. 4 and negative 2 were imaginary, they combined. Same thing with 10 minus 6i minus 4 plus 3i. 10 minus 4 gives me 6. Then I have negative 6 minus 3, so this is minus 9i. Be careful if you need to first distribute the negative one, then do that. Make sure that you're paying attention to signs. That's usually where it's easy to miss a number and get things wrong. So if you need to take an extra step, take that extra step and then put the pieces together. When we move forward and start talking about multiplication, it's gonna be important to remember that i squared is negative one. So let's take some examples to see how that's gonna be important. Where I have two i times three i, I know two times three is six and I know i times i is i squared. So six i squared will be six times negative one, so I end up with negative six. As you're multiplying complex or imaginary numbers, it's important that you first put them in the right form before you go to multiply. So with the square root of negative 25, I wanna call that five i. The square root of negative 64, I wanna make that an eight i. Five times eight is 40. i times i is i squared. I squared is negative one, so I end up with negative 40. What you don't wanna do is first multiply negative 25 times negative 64 and get a positive number. You always wanna convert first to imaginary numbers before you try to do multiplication. An important concept as we move forward and we're looking later at maybe solving polynomial equations or looking at graphing polynomial functions is we're gonna need something called a complex conjugate. Complex conjugates mean that I have a plus bi and a minus bi. What you'll notice is the real parts are the same. They're both a's. The imaginary parts are very similar. The only difference is the sign. I add plus b and I add minus b. For example, five plus four i and five minus four i are complex conjugates. So let's do a couple where we find the conjugate. So I'm giving you negative three minus seven i. The complex conjugate will be negative three plus seven i. 
I only change the sign that's between the real and imaginary part of the number. Look at this number 2i. Now 2i looks like it doesn't have a real part and we talked about this earlier. So if it helps you, you could say that's zero plus 2i. So what do I wanna do? I wanna keep the zero and I wanna switch the sign to negative sign. So I have zero minus 2i, so that says 2i and negative 2i, they would be complex conjugates. What are we gonna do with complex conjugates? We are gonna to need to know how to multiply them for college algebra. So let's try that. So start with, I gave you two plus three i. Let's say what the complex conjugate is. So the conjugate would be two minus three i. Real simple, just change the sign. Now I wanna find the product. So we are gonna multiply this out. So I think I go two times two, which is four. I do two times negative three i, so that's minus six i. I do three i times two, that's a positive six i. And then I do 3i times negative 3i, so that's negative 9i squared. Immediately, I hope you see that the 6i and the negative 6i are going to cancel. So I have 4 minus 9i squared. Well, we just talked about the fact that i squared is negative 1. So this negative and this negative are going to cancel, and I'll have 4 plus 9, which is 13. It's kind of interesting to see here that I multiplied a complex number times a complex number and I ended up with a real number. What really happened is I have this nice little formula that says when I multiply a plus bi and a minus bi, I end up with a squared plus b squared. Maybe this kind of pulls you back to the difference of squares and it's not quite that, right? This is the sum of squares and the sum of squares has imaginary numbers in it, but I think that nice little shortcut will help you. So let's try this again with negative 8 minus the square root of 7i. I'm going to start with the conjugate. It's negative 8 plus the square root of 7i. Once I have that, I'm going to multiply it out. Now you can always choose to do it the long way. You can multiply each little piece and have this bigger distribution that you get, or you can use our shortcut that a plus bi times a minus bi is a squared plus b squared. So I can take the negative 8 squared and say plus the square root of 7 squared. So I don't have to worry about the i. I don't have to worry about what sign goes in the middle. I know what's going to happen. Negative 8 squared is 64. Square root of 7 squared is 7. I add that together. I get 71. Now, what we just did is a really quick look at kind of like an introduction to complex numbers. There, of course, is more. There are times that people look at the powers of i and what do they do? We didn't do any division of i. So I wanna be clear that we did not jump into everything. We did what we need to do to get through college algebra, which is we need to be able to deal with i's to do the quadratic formula and to deal with i's so that we can do the zeros of polynomials.